Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. It is your boy Captain Cowboy with my f good old friend Swag here to talk to you all today about Iron Throne and how to gain power. So, a lot of people ask, you know, what's how how do I gain power? Like, what's a good way of gaining power? And then, what's the most efficient way to make my power gains worthwhile? or versus keeping a lower power to intimidate and kind of trap people. So we'll talk about all of that here in this nice little video. So let's go ahead and start off with how do we gain power? Well, there's going to be the obvious things and then there's going to be the not so obvious things that we can be here to talk about. So gain power and gain this big old number that says 13.2 billion. The easiest way to do this is construction. So construction, you know, you kind of have to construct in order to get those pretty big old castles. However, that's not really where a lot of your power gain is going to be coming from. You can train troops, but you're not going to be gaining a lot of power. The power is actually really small. Um, if we like look at a breakdown of my power, we'll notice that I have 10.5 billion power in research compared to a troop power of 298 million. Even my building power is significantly, like, exponentially higher. My equipment power is also, like, a billion, so that's extremely high as well. Lower level, pretty low. Trap power, non-existent. So these are some things that we want to consider. As you can tell, research is king. Research is everything. If you really just care about gaining power and nothing else, open up this crafting tab and you just max out everything here so we get amplification of set bonus one two and three and then we can go move into the immortal set bonus amplification and like let's say let, let's look at this one for example that final research is 600 million power in this tree we're looking at a final research of 250 million now, so this is pretty darn solid rewards in power gains this one's 345 so you know it's varying, however, that, that's a huge power gain, and it's also amazing stats as well at the same time. But if we're looking at actually getting the benefits, though, out of a power gain, we want to be looking at our troop training page, where we're increasing the base percentages on some of our troops. And now the base percentages, the base stat line numbers, will increase the effect that our percentage from our gear and our other research from our battle tree will impact that effect. So we also want to focus on battle to go ahead and get some good stats as well as city to get some good defensive stats um, and then hero training to get some good stats from our hero, from our troops, and just from our heroes in general. So that's going to be covering research. Now construction is very straightforward. We want to just go ahead and keep all of our buildings up to date and up to par with the rest of our castle. Now if we look at troops on the other hand, this is where things start getting a little more tricky. Now I have videos on what kind of troop composition we want to be looking for when we train troops, but now let's go ahead and talk about what kind of troop composition is going to be the most beneficial. So T1s and T2s outright no. Because of our level 40 gear, there is zero benefit and there's actually negatives to having tier 1 and tier 2 troops. They're just going to die outright. There's really no reason to have tier 1s or tier 2 troops. Now the thing is that leaves us with tier 3s and a lot of people are complaining. I like I heard some claims like hey this game's not good for free to play because there's no benefit of having tier 1s or tier 2 troops. Well they're the weakest troops. If you're free to play you're, you'll at least be able to train tier 5s, tier 6s, you know, depending on where you are at. Um, so if you're able to train T3, tier 1 through T6, why do you want to only train tier 1? Yeah, they're cheap, but you're not getting any real benefits out of it because you're just going to have large quantities of troops. You, So, like, tier 3 is a good median ground, and they have good stats to back it up while maintaining a very cheap ability and cost to own. So that's why I'm recommending tier 3s as like a starting ground. This is where we want to start off. However, where we really want to focus on is going to be around our tier 5 area. Because the tier 5 is going to be able to have all these stat bonuses above our tier 4s and our tier 3s. 
and they're going to be able to have kind of like not essentially leverage but it's kind of like leverage over those troops so that's something that we definitely want to keep our eye out for tier six are going to be very expensive to obtain and to craft we're looking at maybe like a quarter million for two thousand of these uh for twenty thousand of these troops so a quarter million of a quarter billion of each resource type for 20,000 of these troops so it's going to be very expensive to obtain um, and it might not necessarily be the best possible method so we want to keep that in mind and we want to focus those tier threes once we get above our tier threes we want to start focusing on the tier fours so like tier threes I did 2 million and then I did 10 million of my siege then I'm working on my tier 4's, I want 2 million and then 10 million of my siege. Not yet done. Tier 5's, I'm going to want the 2 million, then I'm going to want 10 million of the siege. So I'm still working on my tier 4's, I really have yet to start doing troop training. Once I buy a couple more packs, probably looking at doing that later tonight, maybe tomorrow. I mean, it depends on my availability. Um, I've been having a lot of things going on. been working on that, you know, the website the shirts the stickers so all those things are kind of holding me back from being able to obtain all this but you know once it's all taken care of then I'll be able to go ahead and continue with my troop training but this is going to be where we're going to be focusing our power now here comes the question with what do I want to do if I'm going to be a trap account and I want to keep my power low and kind of trap people and bait them into attacking my castle well here's what you really want to do if you're going to be doing that so we talked about getting the best bang for your buck with research where you're not taking it all the way up to that most expensive but you're getting that big goal percentage jump so if we look at level 9 to level 10 we're doubling the but the buff that we're getting so we're going from 16.2 percent to 30 percent and we're not really gaining a lot of power by doing that so if you want to be an effective trap account and still have amazing research to be able to defend your castle and have the stats, what you want to do is you want to have that level 10. And then you kind of just want to stop there. I mean, yes, you can double it again at 15, but you're going to be having a huge jump in power to be able to do that. So it might honestly not be worth it. You know, because we're prioritizing a low power with a high reward. And, you know, again, when we get to, uh, like, the city, we're going to be seeing this where we're doubling from 4% to 8%, and then we double it again by the time we get to level 15, but we have a huge power jump to get there. So this is something that I want to do, because I don't really care about my power. I'm not a trap account. Everyone in my kingdom knows I'm ranked 2 in power. That's not a trap. I'm talking trap, like, 300 million, 500 million, you know, depending on the range of the power in your kingdom so we can like look at um other lords here and like I'll, I'll point out a power level and I'll tell you that this is a trap account and that's at 1 billion or less is going to be a trap account now I mean it, possibly some people might not be a trap account they might not understand that and that is com that's so commonplace Another thing is we probably don't want to do any of this crafting research because, again, like I pointed out, it's a huge, huge power gain. Um, that's a bad one to show is that it's not really a huge power gain. But like if we look at this base set bonus 3, we're gaining so much power. Now, what we can do is, again, take it up to that level 10 because by level 10, we're gaining a huge power jump. You know, we're going 3%, maybe like 5%. And then we're going 8%. So it's a huge power jump to go to level 10. So I'd probably recommend we take all of our research to level 10. You know, we're going to have a strong power. But we're not going to be overly, overbearingly so with um, our power. And we can effectively trap other people. Ladies and gentlemen, this is pretty much how to gain power. How to be an effective trap account. Thank you all for watching. This is Captain Cowboy. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button in the middle of your screen. Also, if you are interested in getting into the playtest for Iron Throne, first time downloads only, go ahead and hit me up in any of the ways listed below. And don't forget to go ahead and check out our website and pick up yourself a t-shirt or stickers exclusively.
from Cabin Cowboy. Thank you all for watching.